Coming in at number 10, we have Stephen Hawking's death day. Stephen Hawking was one of the most brilliant minds of our time and left a scientific legacy that humans will revere for centuries to come. It was definitely a sad day when he died on March 14th, 2018. Wait a minute. Isn't that 3.14? Aren't those the first three numbers of pi? Why, yes. Ye yes, it yes, it is. But wait, that's not all. Not only does Hawking's death day coincide with pi, it also lands on Albert Einstein's birthday and on the day that Galileo also met his end. Hmm, I guess great minds think alike. Coming in at number nine, we have Mark Twain and Halley's Comet. They came in together, they must go out together. This was something Twain said before he died. Mark Twain was born on November 30th, 1835, which was the same year, and two weeks after, Halley's Comet flew past. During his time on Earth, Twain was famous for such works as Tom Sawyer and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and many more. He was awesome. Twain was convinced next time the Haley Comet dropped by, that would be his time to go, and he was right. On April 21st, 1910, Mark Twain met his end, which was coincidentally the day after the comet passed by once again. Coming in at number eight, The Simpsons in general. One of the longest running TV shows in history, The Simpsons are notorious for somehow predicting outrageous events including the president of the United States was gonna be Donald Trump. If you watched the episode with Donald Trump as president today, you would probably have thought it was just another comedic, satirical episode of a TV show to do with the time. But the thing is, they wrote that sucker 19 years ago. How on earth did they guess that? With the show running for over 30 years, themes occurring in the show are eventually gonna happen in real life, maybe. But this? They predicted a three-eyed fish, a circus entertainer getting attacked mid-performance, even the Ebola outbreak. I think we can safely put down The Simpsons as one large coincidence, considering the amount they've had. They happen so often that the questions of whether they are psychic or actually secretly controlling events, I don't know, these are just things we need to know. Like right now. <laughs> These kinds of coincidences just need an explanation. Coming in at number seven, Catherine Eddowes and Mary Kelly. Jack the Ripper. That's, yeah, that's pretty much all I need to say to get all the cold case crime fanatics interested. Are you ready? This next coincidence is a lot darker. Catherine Eddowes was one of Jack the Ripper's victims, taken only an hour after Elizabeth Stride. But this is where things get creepier. That day, Eddowes was found passed out drunk on the street and was arrested. Once she was sober enough to go home, she ended up giving the police a fake name, Mary Kelly. That same night, Eddowes was murdered, and guess who would follow in her footsteps? A woman named Mary Jane Kelly. That's ridiculous. Like, that just makes me wonder whether it actually, I know they solved the crime, but that makes me wonder as to whether, I don't know, uh, Jack the Ripper was actually in the police force? How could that happen? How how can we explain that? That's just, that's just too wild. Coming in at number six, we have Royce Burton. Are you ever right in the middle of telling a story when the very person you're talking about like walks into the room? There are two subtle reactions. One, pretend you weren't talking about them. Depending on what you're talking about. Gossiping, like, just pretend, just pretend. What? Oh, what's that? Oh, who's that? Oh, hey, that's what you do. And the second one, you just look at them and go, oh, speak of the devil. Royce Burton had the latter reaction, though it was kind of cooler. When the very stranger who saved his life strolled in right as he mentioned him. Royce used to be a Texas Ranger, and one night while patrolling the Rio Grande in 1940, he got lost and tried to climb up the cliff to find his way. As he was nearing the edge, he almost fell, but then the hand of a man named Joe, like, reached out and hoisted him up. The two men lost contact when they both joined the war, and 25 years later, Burton had become a teacher and he was in the middle of the story when Joe strolled in. Not missing a beat, Burton said, I'll let Joe finish the story. And his whole class were like, what? These guys hadn't seen each other in 25 years. And apparently Joe had been looking for him and the rest is the rest of the story you know. Coming in at number five, you know when you meet that special someone and you just know you're meant to be? Some people are so lucky. And this couple got a physical sign that they were in the right place at the right time. Melody Kloska and Matt Burr were married on August 18th on the beautiful Wisconsin beach. A week later, they took their vows, placed them in a bottle and watched them go on their merry way as they let them drift on Lake Michigan, only to be recovered by Lynette and Fred Dubendorf. To their delight and surprise, the wedding date matched theirs as they were married on August 18th, 1979, almost 28 years earlier. If that's not a sign of forever love, then I don't know what is. Coming in at number four, speaking of signs, many people often look for the right signs when making a big decision or when looking for love. After going through a rough breakup, Esther Gracken wrote her name on several dollar bills and promised herself 
that she would only marry the man who brought one back to her. Wow, wouldn't you know, a few years later, a man named Paul dating Esther for a while and he decided one day he's gonna ask her to be his girlfriend. That same day, as he was going to pay for his sandwich, he noticed that his dollar bill had Esther's name on it written in pencil. Weird, he was just thinking about her. He decided to frame it and save it for her as a gift. When she got it, she gasped, but didn't say anything until a few years later, because she didn't want to jinx it, when they were married. That was when she told him the story, and the two have lived happily ever since. Can't be explained, but it's pretty damn cute. Coming in at number three, Parent Trap. So first off, consider the chances of actually conceiving twins. About one in 250, so that's already a cool thing. But then imagine you pull a parent trap and discover you have actually had a twin your entire life, but you were separated at birth, and then you find out that not only do you look identical, your lives are too. This is exactly what happened to two men when they were reunited at age 39. They were both named James, they both grew up to be police officers, and both their wives were named Linda. Each also had a son named James Allen and a dog named Toy. Then they both got divorced and both married a woman named Betty. What are the chances of that? More like one, one in a billion than one in 250. Coming in at number two, we have Richard Parker and Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe, master of the macabre. This man's mind went to some pretty dark, albeit creative places. Some even say he predicted the future, which could be the only explanation for this coincidence. The narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket is one of his most terrifying, as it recounts the tale of sailors forced to eat a cabin boy named Richard Parker after being stranded on a boat after a shipwreck. People guffawed at Poe when he said that this was based off a true story, though there were none like it at the time. What is insanely creepy about the story is that 50 years later, the exact same event happened, mimicking the story in eerily close ways. The most ominous being that the boy the real sailors ate, his name was Richard Parker. And coming in at number one, Violet Jessup. Luck and coincidence often go hand in hand, especially for Violet Jessup. They called the Titanic unsinkable, but I think they meant her. This woman survived not one. Not two, but three shipwrecks, including the aforementioned Titanic. She was either really lucky or a bad omen or both. Probably both. She worked as a nurse and stewardess on the HMS Olympic when it was struck by the HMS Hawk. She was on board the HMHS Britannic when it was hit by a landmine and the Titanic, and we all know that story. Though her lifeboat was almost taken down by the spinning propellers, Violet jumped out just in time and hit her head, but she survived, ending up living to age 83. How could one woman be so unlucky and lucky to survive three iconic shipwrecks? Hmm, must be a coincidence. Starting off this countdown, we have the married couple's parents. This story surrounds a couple named Stephen and Helen Lee. A couple of years ago, the pair got engaged when they learned something very freaky about their families. While going through family photos during their engagement party, they found photos of their parents together. Turns out that Stephen's father and Helen's mom had actually dated and were set to get married in Korea in the 1960s. But their parents' parents disapproved, so they didn't. Had they not disapproved, the couple would have never been born. Born. Not only that, but what are the odds that they got together after their parents had already gotten together? Kind of awkward if you ask me. Moving on to number nine, we have the church fire. On March 1st of 1950 at 7.25 p.m., a church exploded in Beatrice, Nebraska. At 7.20, a choir practice had begun, except none of the 15 choir members were there. And it's lucky that they weren't or else they would have perished in the fire. Turns out that all 15 members arrived late due to personal reasons. So they were nowhere near the church when it exploded. What are the odds that all 15 members were running late? This story could have ended in tragedy. Thankfully, it didn't. Moving on to number eight, we have the wedding vows. In 2007, Fred and Lynette Dubendorf were walking along a beach clearing up some litter when they found a message in a bottle. After they opened it, they found it contained the marriage vows of another couple. Upon closer inspection, they found that their marriage dates matched. The couple who created the vows in the bottle were married on August 18th of that year. The Dubendorfs were married August 18th of 1979. Both couples were also married on beaches. The Dubendorf the Dorfs were in complete shock and actually reached out to the other couple. Thankfully, the couple left their address in the bottle. 
Both couples now believe that their marriages were meant to be. Especially Matt and Melody, the couple that wrote the vows in a bottle, who had several failed marriages before finding each other. They were skeptical about getting married again, but this to them is a sign that it was meant to be. Moving on to number seven, we have Edgar Allan Poe. This is one of the freakiest coincidences I have ever read about. So in 1838, Edgar Allan Poe wrote his only complete novel. It was called The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. The book was about Arthur Pym who goes on a nautical adventure. He hops on a boat as a stowaway and hides out there. But while aboard the ship, a mutiny occurs and a number of crew members lose their life. There's only four members aboard the ship now. One of the men was named Richard Parker. They kept him alive to help them control the ship. However, they encountered a terrible, terrible storm and things went south. The remaining four people on board are struggling to find food. So Richard was like, let's draw straws. Whoever gets the shortest straw will be killed and the others can eat them. So they did as Richard said, and he ended up drawing the shortest straw and then was eaten by his crew members. Believe it or not, but 46 years after that book was published, this happened in real life. In May of 1884, four men were traveling from England to Australia when they found themselves fighting for their lives. The men decided to draw straws and see who they should eat. The cabin boy drew the smallest straw. What was the cabin boy's name? Richard Parker the same name as the guy who got eaten in the book. What are the odds of that? Is Edgar Allan Poe a psychic or did he write history or both? Moving on to number six, we have Redbox. This story comes from Madney25 on Reddit. A couple of years ago, her and her friend went to Redbox to see if they could rent the movie Tron. For those of you who don't know what Redbox is, basically it's an American video rental company that has these little kiosks you can go to and pick what movie you want and then you can rent it and you'll get the DVD. So they went there, but they found out that they didn't have Tron. So they were like, okay, screw it, let's just rent another movie. Well, when they opened up the DVD case, turns out that inside was the movie Tron. Someone had put it back in the wrong case. But what are the odds? Because that's the movie that they wanted to see in the first place. Like out of all the DVDs they could have gotten, they got the one with the switched disc. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the lucky numbers. So this story comes from Yamaletf on Reddit. According to them, they were working as a call center operator when they asked the caller for her birthday. The caller said it was April 20th, which was the same birthday as the operator. When the next caller rang in, their birthday was April 27th, which was the same birthday as the operator's brothers. So at this point, the operator was like, okay, what is going on? And then the caller told her that maybe it's a sign and that she should go play the lottery with those dates. And that night she went to the grocery store, played with those numbers and ended up winning. It was only $380, but still that's better than nothing. What are the odds that the winning numbers correlated to the caller's birthdays? In our fourth spot, we have the birthdays. According to a woman named Carrie Lee Simmons, her and her best friend share a number of eerie similarities. First, they both have the same birthdays. Not only that, but turns out that they were born in the same hospital and their mothers shared the same recovery room. Keep in mind that their mothers were complete strangers. Then 17 years later, the two connected and became best friends. When they found out that they were practically born beside each other, they completely freaked out. That's how you know that friendship is meant to be. In our third spot, we have the sign. This next story is from Reddit user EricFP23. So the day in which her grandfather died, her mother had been sitting in bed next to him, comforting him. Before he passed, she whispered to him, tell Richie I say hi. Richie was her ex-husband who had passed away a couple years earlier. A couple of days after her grandfather's passing, Erica and her mom were at Walgreens when all of a sudden a huge truck drove by with some writing written on the side of it. It read, Richie says hi. I am speechless. Like that's just goosebumps. And Erica and her mom were speechless too. It's either just a super eerie coincidence or Richie sent that message from the grave. Moving on to number two, we have the taxi driver. I'm sorry, but this one is a little depressing compared to the other stories on today's list. In 1974, a man was riding his moped scooter in Bermuda when he was struck and killed by a taxi. One year later, his twin brother was riding the exact same scooter when he was struck and killed by a taxi as well. The taxi was driven by the exact same driver who took his brother's life. So not only did the twins die the exact same way, but they had been killed by the exact same person. 
And in our number one spot today, we have the life savior. When Su Wei Fong of China was 50 years old, he was outside near a river by his home when he saw a boy drowning. So he jumped in and saved his life. 30 years later, he rescued another boy from the river. This boy had slipped and fell into the river and didn't know how to swim. Once again, Wei Fong jumped in and saved this boy's life. Well, turns out that the two people he saved were related. They were father and son. 30 years ago, he saved the boy's father from drowning. Then he saved the father's son from drowning in the same river. So they believe that this man is their guardian angel. Start off like we always do with our number 10. Meet Alex and Donna Vutsinas. They met at work and fell in love. Aww. She was from Florida and he was from Canada. Just days before they got married, Alex was looking through some of Donna's childhood photos and stumbled across this one of her posing at Disneyland with her brothers. Alex looked closely in the background and oh my god, he realized the man in the background was his own father and the boy he was pushing was him. What? That is unbelievable. They were from different countries, but somehow ended up in the same childhood picture together 20 years before they married at Disneyland as kids. Is that fate? Is that fate? I think that's fate. Coming in at number nine, we have the story of a 70 year old man from Finland. In 2002, he was riding his bike in a snowstorm in the town of Rahe when he was sadly hit and killed by a truck. It was a tragic and rare occurrence occurrence, but just two hours later, another man was hit and killed by a truck while cycling less than a mile down the road. That man was his twin brother. Police said it was unlikely that the second twin had even heard about his brother's death before he died the exact same way. The first officer on the scene said that when she heard the 70 year olds were twin brothers, it made the hair on her back stand on end. Blah, creepy. Next up at number eight, Dr. Peter Scott was the co-founder of the Loch Ness Phenomena Investigation Bureau. Their aim was to identify the legendary creature known as the Loch Ness Monster. Now, Dr. Peter Scott wanted to make sure that whatever was lurking beneath the waters there could be protected as an endangered species, but first, he needed to give it a proper Latin name for it to be registered. He called it this, Nessitaris Rombop. Terex. Now the words came from ancient Greek and mean the monster of Ness with the diamond shaped fin. But not long after this announcement, a journalist with a bit too much time on their hands, I think, decided to unscramble the letters and they realized they were a perfect anagram of the phrase monster hoax by Sir Peter S. What? That's pretty mental, right? Come on. Can anyone explain that? Can any of you guys explain that? I don't care about all the Nessie pictures out there. You don't need to explain that. Just explain this one for me. Next up at number seven, we have the incredible story of the Jim twins. In 1940, twin boys were separated at birth in Ohio and adopted by separate families. When they finally tracked each other down at the age of 37, they found out that they had both been named Jim. But oh, the weirdness was just getting started. Jim and Jim both had childhood dogs that they named Toy. When they grew up, they both married women called Linda. They both then divorced their respective Lindas and remarried women who were both called Betty. They both had a son who they have both named James Allen. They both got tension headaches, smoked the same brand of cigarettes, drove the same model of car, and went to the same part of Florida for their vacation. And the list goes goes on. I think they're both wondering why the other one had to copy them so hard. Like, dude, can you just get your own life, Jim, and stop copying mine, Jim? Number six. In 1975, the Royal Gazette paper of Bermuda reported that a man called Erskine Eben had been hit and killed by a taxi as he drove his moped. What was crazy about this, though, was that Erskine's brother had died a year before, too. He was killed on the exact same moped. He was hit by the exact same taxi with the exact same taxi driver. And here's the real kicker. He was carrying the exact same passenger in the back both times. Whoa! I'm personally surprised the police didn't arrest that passenger because he might have been some sort of like genius murderer who kills his victims with like taxis. Next 
to the number 5, we're going back to Detroit in 1937 where a street sweeper named Joseph Figlock was out, you know, sweeping the streets when a baby fell out of the sky and hit him on the head and shoulder. The baby had fallen from the fourth story of a nearby building and likely would have been killed if Joseph was not there to stop the fall. That was strange but Joseph carried on with his life for another year but then while out sweeping a completely different street, another baby landed on him from a nearby building. Again. Again, it hit Joseph on the head and again the baby survived. This guy was like the strangest superhero of all time, saving babies with the power of his cushiony head. And now at number 4, in the 1920s there were 3 Englishmen on a train in Peru. They were all travelling separately and had never met each other and were already pretty surprised that there were 3 English guys on a train together on the other side of the world. Then they introduced each other. The first man's surname was Bingham, the second man's surname was Powell. The third man raised his eyebrows in shock and announced to the other two that his surname was Bingham Powell. Whoa, the chances of that happening are mental. At number 3 now, we have the story of Michael Dick from England who wanted to get in touch with his daughter Lisa who he had not seen for 10 years after splitting up with his wife and moving away from his home. He tried everything but when all else failed he asked for some help from a local newspaper. They took this picture you're seeing now for the article. Amazingly, Lisa saw the article but before she could get in touch she realised something incredible. She saw herself in the background of the photo photo with her mother. They had actually taken a picture just there moments before and were walking away when Michael took this picture. The very person he was trying to look for after 10 years was in the photo he used to find her. I bet that's going to be a very important family photo. Coming in at number 2, in 1914 a German mother took a picture of her newborn son to be developed in Strasbourg but before she could collect it, World War 1 broke out. The woman had to leave the picture there and considered it lost forever. Then two years later she was in Frankfurt, over 100 miles away and now she had a new baby girl. Again she went to get a picture of her daughter developed but when she got it back she was quite annoyed to see there had been some sort of double exposure with someone else's picture in the background. It wasn't someone else's picture, it was her picture of her son that she took two years before over 100 miles away that had somehow ended up in a different store, marked unused and had been sold back to her where she then put another picture of another child of hers on top of it. <sighs> And finally at number 1, we're going back to 1899 where a man was struck and killed by lightning while standing in his backyard in Taranto, Italy. That's incredibly unlucky, the chances of that happening are very low, but guess what? 30 years later in 1929 his son was also killed by lightning in the exact same place. Okay. That's crazy right, that is crazy, a father and a son from the same family being killed by lightning in the same place. What are the chances of that? Well, 20 years after that, on October 8th 1949 a man called Roller Primada was also killed by lightning on exactly the same spot. He was the son of the second victim and grandson of the first. Incredible. I'm seriously wondering if that family was like made out of metal or something because nobody should attract lightning that much. 